Hello. Yeah, I was wondering for Christmas, I think, what do I need? You know, I, I know I'm difficult to buy for, and, uh, you know, uh, what, what do I want for Christmas? And I thought of a few things, but I never thought anyone would buy me a musical Bluetooth plant pot. It's a bizarre product. It's, um, it's just an illustration of just how you can waste the Earth's resources. You know, it's six ninety nine or seven ninety nine, including VAT. I mean, goodness sake, it's going to end up in the bin. Who would really use this apart from uh, a very short-term novelty, really? Yeah, so here's Prick the Cactus, a well-respected and loved cactus in the household, has been lodged in the plant playing pot, and uh, we're going to have a, a recital right now. The trouble is that it's a little bit prickly, so... To hit the right notes, you might have to suffer some pain, but you know, you have to suffer for your art, okay? So stop laughing, it's not funny. This is a serious business. Right, now if you'd like to take it away, away you go. Take it away, Mary. Does it only work on the shaft? good <laughs> um, but I thought it'd be interesting to play around with it and then take it apart and just see what Bluetooth chips it's got inside and stuff like that and see if we could do anything useful with it so it's a nice carton CE approved thumbs up plant pot it's got a light thing let's take it out of the box shall we, we can talk about it a bit more so we've got some instructions they're pretty sparse I've had a look but um, it doesn't do that much actually so what we've got is this thing inside and a was that anything apart from a thummy sticker which is a useful thummy sticker for sticking somewhere don't know I'll have a look what other products they do so what have we got we got a pot that's what we got lithium battery speaker grill in the bottom CE mark I bet it isn't really we'll have a look in a minute and uh, sensing rod. The idea is you put your soil in there and put your plant in there and when you touch it this is you get some sort of capacitance or resistive or pick up on there and that triggers the electronics to do whatever it wants to do. Right we'll see what that does in a minute and you can see down there if I... can you see that's a hole that hole goes all the way through this hole here is a drain hole in there, you can see there's an end of a screwdriver. It's literally to let the uh, extra juice run out rather than your plug getting drowned, your plant getting drowned, should I say? Yeah, so steel rod, and what did we get? So, is that charge? Yeah, it's got a USB uh, mini micro USB charge connector, lithium battery. It says the lights come on. Um, when it's charging and then when the, it's fully charged it the lights go off. I quite like the light just to stay green when it's fully charged or something like that so um, you know if you're charging it the lights come on and sort of flash but it just goes dead when it's fully charged and then the power on and Bluetooth uh, pairing light uh, pairing button pause play and a light and I can't get that light to actually do anything it says in here Usual Chinese instructions. Yeah, plant pot. So there's the spec. Features: touch control, seven lights, seven built-in songs, 360-degree sound, Bluetooth function. So that's about charging. When the plant pot is fully charged, the LED indicator will turn off. Well, I'd like it to go green, please. Uh, that solves the plant. Long Wessler, long press the power button on the plant pot on. The plant pot will emit a sound and automatically enter the touch mode. Touching different parts of the plant flower play the song. The colour LEDs will flash off the beat. Press the next button to skip the next track. LED light mode. When the plant pot is turned off, press the next light button to go to white mode. Press again for colour changing mode and again for off. So it's actually a standalone light as well. Okay, you have flashy, and then there's just Bluetooth pairing, which is pretty obvious. And it goes straight into uh, German after that. Now let's give her a go, shall we? 
So what do we get? Let's zoom out so you can see. If I uh, turn that light on and that light off, you'll get a better view of the sheer brilliance of this thing. So I turn her on. So that's the on noise. No, there's no volume control on this thing. No volume control. I mean, if you imagine I had a plant and you touch the plant, you get... So it's picking up the capacitance or the mains pick up from me. If you approach it slowly, it's one of those touch sensor chips. Touch it slowly, slowly. Yeah, but if you go in quick, without touching it. So... you think of that's that if you know your ABC tell me what you think of me I think you're a pretty crap waste of plastic and all that and so on and so on so yeah so that's the the and if I turn her off she's gone off and then if I press and hold that long press did it say that one or was it that one which was the lighting button which was the lighting button LED light mode. When the pump is turned off, press the next light button to go into white mode. Alright, so there you go. So you press that one, the M1, to go into white mode. Oh look, it does. So I wouldn't want fiddling around with that trying to find that in the night. I'd quite like this when it's switched on when you touch the plant, the light comes on. Mind you, you'd probably take a swipe for <laughs> the plant in the middle of the night, end up covering soil all over the floor. Not, and then press it again, it should go into colour changing mode. Yeah, so it's a mood light, look, one of those moody mood lights. I wonder if it just does the primaries or whether it actually goes into something a bit more clever than that. So we've got the primaries now, red, green and blue. Is that orange? Green. No, so it just does the primaries. If I press it again, it turns it off. Alright, so that's that. And then the pairing mode is you press this, turn it on. That's pretty loud. And then you press it again. Enter Bluetooth connected. So that's it. it. It's reconnected to my phone, but before it's just enter pairing mode. So the Bluetooth works quite well, actually. And if I can find some royalty-free music, if you upload anything on YouTube with anything recognisable in the terms of a song, have a look. Royalty-free Christmas songs. Have you had enough yet? No, you haven't. And then all I want for Christmas... How come that's royalty free then? Well it isn't is it? That's complete rubbish. What makes him think they're royalty free? Pillock. Uh, royalty free music, no copyright. That's more like it. So is it going to play? There we go. So we have sound to light, flashy light. I don't know which is bass, which is treble, whether it's just random selection of colours. Does it correlate with anything you can see? So out of um, the small Bluetooth speakers that you can see, I'd give it about a 4 out of 10. It's um... It sounds a lot better like that. When you put it down there, you've got this effect of this resonant cavity underneath the unit, and it sounds a bit hollow. So nothing happens. That's maximum volume there, so it's not that loud either. So, let's kill that. So, a real novelty, really, is... <laughs> Is it a good use of the world's resources? You tell me. So let's turn the lights back on so we can see what we're doing. So I think the best thing for this is to take it apart. I'm quite curious to see which Bluetooth chipset it uses. Because I'm into Bluetooth chipset design. Well, designs using Bluetooth chipsets. And I'm always interested in a, a cheaper alternative Bluetooth device. So we might be able to see. Yeah, there's screws under here, look. So let's whip those screws out and we'll have a quick look inside there poke around in the guts of her for a few minutes just to see whether 
but you really want to, you know, I suppose it's a step up from your mobile phone speaker, but not much really. I've got a wow wow, how are we, how are we? It's a way of saying, isn't it? How are we? How are we? I've got a Huawei phone, and um, yeah, I'd say the speakers on that are as good as this, just for the phone anyway. So apart from a novelty of touching the plant and it just doing the business. At least you can take it apart and then steal the useful components out of there. There we go. So unplug the speaker. Nice. <clears throat> Not coming out. Not coming out. Where's my cutters? I have to be a, a bit careful what I say about this thing because um, <coughs> someone quite close to me bought it for me thinking he likes music I'll buy him a Bluetooth electronically activated touch control plant speaker pop because he hasn't got one of those well not surprising it was not something I'd go out and buy normally so you've got a 4 ohm sp speaker little speaker look in there nothing special about that don't think the acoustics have been particularly well thought out three little screws and here's the guts of her. There's the lighting ring. It's that translucent plastic. Quite good, really. Quite good stuff. I wonder what that is. There's no recycling marks on there. No recycling marks on there, boys. So is this really CE approved? No, it isn't. God, you've got a 3680, is it? The size of that, a nice cell. A useful cell indeed. And then let's whip her off. Whip the circuit board off, shall we? So you see it's quite an interesting and wasteful shape of um, this board where there's big cutout and this part here. They must make these with, um, you know, you're going to conserve the materials so you're going to have to be careful how you do it. And um, they must make these somehow interlock with each other and cut them out. There's a blob of solder where the sensor pin has been soldered onto the board and it goes through this little resistor capacitor network and then through that line into that chip so that chip's got sensor um, touch sensor touch sensing built in we've got our two touch switches here you know, uh, so side mount tack switches they're about three four cents each so that's uh, six cents worth of materials there in Chinese factory prices got a 24 megahertz crystal here there's an antenna which must be the Bluetooth antenna it's an interesting design actually, they've done it in a stage dipole type um, or monopole aerial. Normally you feed in the end and have a balancing network but they've actually fed it along a stubby feeds a feed into the antenna. And notice the antenna is butted right up against the battery so that's not going to be a great design for the tuning of the antenna. Um, so what we're going to have to do is just get the soldering iron out, turn her on and see what she's got. So I wonder, should we just zoom in and have a look at this? All right, here's a pretty close-up view of everything. What have we got? We've got the, uh, obviously a micro, which is JL. I don't recognize that. I'm going to look that up in a minute and see if I can find a data sheet. You've got your touch sensor network here. Going to the pin, that's the end of the touch sensor pin, which goes up in the soil. So when you touch the plant, the thing goes off. There's the Bluetooth antenna connection with the balancing network and, as I say, a monopole antenna. Next to the battery, which is not a great idea. The battery's kind of just loose in there. Look, you can see it. And then we've got uh, some resistors there. What they're for? And some multiplexing of these switches for some reason. So is that one? That's probably the lithium battery chip, and that's probably an audio amplifier, I think, because the speaker's up here. Do those traces go up there? So the speaker socket, yeah, they do. So that's the audio amp chip, okay, so that's where the power amplification It's not in here. That's the power amp for the uh, chip, and these will be the on-off switching off power control, and then with this chip here. So let's have a look underneath, see what's under there in terms of LEDs. So if I just unsolder this pin, this board should come off. He says, yes, she does. 
careful because it's still powered up at the moment because we've still got lithium battery in there. So let's just unplug the lithium battery. And it says uh, it's an 18650, isn't it? So it's 18 mil diameter, 65 long, 1200 milliamp hour. I tell you what, I do think I've done quite a bit with lithium batteries. So that feels quite light for a 1200. I bet it isn't. We could test it, but what's the point? We know it's not going to be 1200. It'll be something they put in just so they can state that it's a 1200. And what have we got on the back here? We've got okay, so RGB lead. 50-50, then some uh, some white leads, so RGB and white, one, two, three, and four, so four LEDs, and a small lead there, I wonder what that's for, didn't notice that doing much actually, is that supposed to be the charge lead that I couldn't see before, Paper, possibly, otherwise, I mean it's nicely made isn't it, I mean it's, look at the soldering, I mean, this is all for like retail price six pounds, six pounds ninety nine in the UK, delivered with Prime. So, out of the factory. I mean, what's this going to be? Two, three pounds, you think? But yeah. So let me just um, have a look at this chip and see whether I can find it. I would have thought you could find a Bluetooth chip, but some of the Chinese parts. They don't even seem to bother with the European market. They see our market as being a finished good market rather than the component market. Um, so they don't really support it very well. So it's a well, I managed to track down the data sheet for this thing. It's not much of a data sheet actually. It's literally just a circuit diagram. And look, it's really a uh, chip that's designed for a clock radio or alarm clock. Very low cost. There's a 24 meg crystal. And actually it's got an FM radio built in as well. Um, FM antenna there, but not connected to anything on this. And interestingly, it also, one of the spec says, this is the QSOP24 package rather than TSSOP24, TSOP24, which is on this board that we've been looking at, but it's the same device. Um, <clears throat> and it's by JL Electronics. Actually, if you're interested, it's Shen, Shenzhen Shenbing Electronics Company, and it's got this range of chips on it, right? So, yeah, uh, we've got left out and right out amplifier built in. There's obviously PIO and stuff and ADC and stuff for, um, I'm not sure whether it's a programmable chip or not. There's not much data, but that's it really. It must be sub 50 cents, I should think, for to enable them to uh, sell this thing for six, seven pounds, including VAT in the UK. The other interesting thing about the Bluetooth on this is that it shouldn't be a CE approved. You saw the CE marking on the bottom of the product, but it's not a Bluetooth approved. There's no identity. There's no um, accreditation to the Bluetooth standard. There's no certification of Bluetooth being done on this product. It's literally just a rogue cowboy Bluetooth product. So it shouldn't be for sale in the UK, but that's not unusual. That's not unusual. There's uh, Amazon's full of them. So that's the circuit anyway. Let's have a look at the rest of the bits and pieces. Well, to sum up on this, I mean, look at this moulding. It's quite nice. It's beautiful um, polished finish to the plastic. I don't know whether it's ABS or whatever. It's got no recycling marks, so it's not CE approved. It's got an insert, insert moulded metal pin, which is this sensor pin here. And quite an elaborate you know, arrangement of ribs and spars and little screw bosses and things with all the right draft on. It's a nice piece of tooling. Uh, a little bit of fracture there, because that's where the sprue broke off when it was injected. But yeah, I mean, not a bad looking thing. Um, nice ring of translucent plastic which fits in, and it does it does actually fit onto here, onto these ribs, I think. Something like that. He says. Or is it that way around? There's a slot in there. Yeah, I mean, it's um, it's a good fit, you know, that's, um, that's smooth. I mean, it's a nice thing, but... Why waste the world's resources on making something which is really, frankly, pretty pointless? Um, I found a new Bluetooth chip supplier, very low cost Bluetooth chips. Um, it's not, as I said before, it's not CE approved. Uh, this CE marking on the bottom of it, wherever it is, 
that's not true. There's no recycling marks on the plastic and the Bluetooth isn't certified by anybody. So if um, it came to the notice of the um, conglomerate of companies that subscribe to Bluetooth, it would be struck off Amazon or eBay or both, or it should be because it's not a real Bluetooth product. Every Bluetooth product is supposed to be submitted for um, accreditation uh, for testing to make sure that it's not going to interfere with other Bluetooth products, that it follows all the rules with regard to arbitration and connection to different devices, security as well, and um, things like radiating EMC or radio interference that it could cause because it's not giving out a pure spectrum without any dangerous sidebands. So, not an approved product, um, no UL V0 marking on the board, or no V marking on the board, so I'm guessing, I don't know if it's self-extinguishing, the battery is quite a powerful battery, so there is enough power in this to cause this to catch fire. You know, if you can output more than 24 watts of power, DC, uh, then you're supposed to have a fuse and other protection mechanisms to prevent uh, ignition, uh, under you know, EN69095, uh, subset of the regulations uh, for CE, uh, small you know, low power DC products have to comply whereas this doesn't, looking over here we've got the battery input and presumably that zero ohm link there is being used as a, some kind of fuse but it could go up in smoke but you never know really, you've got the battery management chips so yeah quite a nicely th nice thing but a complete <laughs> waste of resources I mean, why? Let's face it, why would you want a completely useless uh, Bluetooth speaker with a uh, touch the plant and it sets off some sort of random tunes which are just frankly quite annoying? It might be fun for a kid's nursery or something, but uh, as a serious product, no, not really. It's uh, a landfill. It's something waiting to go into landfill in no time at all. What a waste of time. Anyway, I thought you found it interesting. That's the inside of this thing. I'm going to stick it back together stick a plant in it and then um, see if I can find someone who does like it because if you can subscribe down in this corner that would be useful and there it is, it's the um, touch sensitive plant pot stroke bluetooth speaker stroke light stroke not CE approved plant pot rush out and buy one now